Kids have teddy bears in the coffee on the football. <laughs> he was born. <laughs> on all his school books, he just used to sit practicing his autograph. I've still got his, his school books now with his autograph on, like, because he knew he'd be famous. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever worry that football was going to take over his life? It did take over his life. <laughs> yeah, he's a bit of a joker and he's always fooling around and he's always smiling and laughing and uh, getting up the mischief. Yeah, I just want you to know I think you're the sexiest man on the earth. And we love you. I just think he likes to live life to the full and he enjoys every minute of it. Gemini is the twin sign, sometimes a little weird, but a very good sense of humour. Um, sometimes you can see things that are funny that other people can't, but they're quite infectious um, as the Gemini, and I think that the humour spills over. What's this then? What's this then? What's this then? What's that? What's that? Fetch it. Huh? <laughs> Fetch it. Come on. Oh. Introduction to the family. Who are these two? This is Bonnie with a white head and this is Junior with a wrinkled up face. Hey, the fat one. Junior's the fat one. And Bonnie's the fast one. So it is true that dogs take on the image of their owners then, is it? Oh, I don't know about that. They're my dogs, not Bruce's, you know. <laughs> Do you know that you wanted to be the fifth member of Take That? That is official. That is not telling lies. That is exactly what he wanted to be. And we can all see him as just one of those, definitely. He's always taking the mick out of um, other players and, you know, having a laughing joke. So, yeah, he's good to have him in the dressing room. <laughs> bit of a shy boy, isn't he, Sharpie? He's a bit wider than that, but uh, it's a good laugh. Last time we was away, I think... Uh... He told me he was going to shave his head because he had his head shaved by one of the other lads. And um, he was saying about shaving mine, but I don't think he'll do it, hopefully. I turned up in the morning and just walked through the dressing room door and there was this big bald napper in front of me. I thought we'd uh, sign Lombardo or somebody like, you know, but uh, it was certainly a shock. Um, and he's taken a bit of stick about it in the dressing rooms and uh, I think the lads are hoping he just grows back. You know, the amazing thing is the third longest serving player in the club. There's Brian McQuarrie, Steve Bruce and Wee Sharp, and he's only 24. That's fantastic. He came here in 1988, and um, it's turned out a very, it's been an excellent buy. Were you always going to be a footballer? Was it always your first love, your first interest? Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Um, I never really thought about being anything else. Um, right from the sort of age of eight when I first joined a team, up until 16 when I was leaving school. He used to go out first thing in the morning, up the park with his mates. He used to come back covered from head to toe in mud. Come back for lunch, wash, change, go out in the clean street and come back for tea, covered in mud. <laughs> the mud you got, the more he liked it. So when was your first game of footy? Can you remember it? First game? Uh, apart from just a knockabout in the park with my dad and my brother, um, the first game I played, first team, was the Cubs. Uh, I think I was about eight when I started at the Cubs, and uh, we got hammered 10-1. I thought, oh no, this, this, this is a good start here. He played left back. He beat three players. He picked the ball up next to the post. He beat three players, and he was still inside his six-yard box. 
and I'm yelling him to kick it out, but he just hadn't got the strength. <laughs> <laughs> so after that game, we moved him up front. <laughs> he was safer up there. What was he like at school? What were his school reports like? Uh, always the same. He could do better. Always. And if he wasn't gazing out at the football pitch, watching them play football, concentrating more on his lessons, he'd be a lot better. Physics. Lee needs to do a great deal of work in this subject before the summer exam. English. A very good year's work from Lee has resulted in very respectable grades. Mathematics. Lee shows little interest in the subject and is rather reluctant to work. Physical education. Throughout the fourth year, Lee exhibited a high level of skill in all that he attempted. He particularly excelled and progressed in football. If he wasn't a footballer, what did you want him to be? That's a difficult one. Semi pro footballer. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think all his life there's ever been any discussion other than Lee ever being a footballer. We've, we've never ever, it might sound strange, we've never ever pushed him into football. It might sound strange, but we've encouraged him. No, you never pushed him into football, but I mean, before he could walk, he was holding him by the arms, <laughs> kicking the ball like that. No, I know that. Having me lie on the floor. You know, they can kick with one foot all the time. Well, he used to have me lying on the floor, holding the foot that Lee couldn't kick with. Lee, Lee always kicked with. So he'd kick with the foot that he didn't kick with. I always, pushed I, him into football. I always said, if you're going to do a job, do it well. I got spotted by Birmingham. I was 15 at the time, last year of school, uh, and trained with them once a week for, for 12 months. Um, and then... Uh, they just said that they didn't think I was good enough to be a, a top flight professional, so they let me go just as I was leaving school. So I was a bit, I was a bit distraught, but uh, not too, uh, not too disappointed. A friend of ours said that he could get him a trial down Torquay, and I said he's not going down Torquay. He's not going away from home, and uh, they persuaded me to let him go. And I mean, the back of my mind, I kept thinking, God, I hope he plays bad. <laughs> but once he got there, I mean, they mm -hmm. couldn't believe what they'd got, could they? I went down there with a friend of mine. Um, and he jacked it in before Christmas. Uh, he'd not got such good digs. Uh, he was missing home a bit more than I was. Uh, and he jacked it in. And I think, without a doubt, if I hadn't uh, have had such good digs, then I'd have probably gone home with him. I'll give your landlady a plug. Who was she? Irene Thompson and the two kids, Lee and Kelly. Um, and her husband, uh, Big Bad Bill. With Big Bad Bill and Irene's guidance, Lee settled down to life as a football apprentice. The chores of boot cleaning and the like were not to be for him for long. At just 16 years of age, Lee burst into the Torquay first team. A tall, gangling teenager, Lee was hardly recognisable from today's version. But one early admirer recognised talent when he saw it. Sitting up with a flock of scouts at Plainmore was the man who'd make him a star, Alex Ferguson. Looking out on the, when the performance that night, he did all the things you could see in a football eye. He was athletic, he, good, good lines about him. He was brave, he, he took a couple of head knocks that night and got up and played on, so he had good, good courage about him. Nice left foot. You could see that you, there was potential there. So we decided to do the business that night. I sent Len Nold into, back into the ground and asked to speak to Cyril Knowles, get him out to my car, and we took him for a run. It's one of these runs that you don't get out here until you say yes. <laughs> <laughs> the boss and dad turned up on the house, got me out of bed at one o'clock and said, hey, do you fancy signing for Manchester United? <laughs> I was just speechless. I couldn't believe it. How long did it take to make up your mind? Not very long. Not very long at all. He phoned us about two o'clock in the morning and he says, we just got in, hadn't we, from Torquay? And he said, his dad there. I said, what's the matter? What's happened? Where are you in the police station or something? He says, no, just put dad on. We put his dad on and uh, that's when he said, he says, Alex Ferguson's been down. He said, he wants me from Manchester United. His face. And he's only 17, a surprise signing from 4th Division Torquay last June for £30,000. And here he is making his first league appearance for Mighty Manchester United. Lee Sharp's the name, a fullback, and whatever happens, it's a day he'll never forget. Oh, misunderstanding there leaves uh, Sharp free with McClare outside him. Into the path of Brian Robson, just wide. Well, the young head and the old head in uh, Manchester United side very nearly fashioned an opening goal there. It was a very good run indeed, full of confidence there from young uh, Lee Sharp. And he released the ball perfectly, although McClare was going outside him. He'd spotted his skipper coming up on the inside. And a perfect pass there for Robson to meet and hit it just wide.
Fresh faced, aged only 17, Lee got his United break as an emergency left back. But soon he was moved into the number 11 shirt and made his mark as a goal scoring winger. Injury cost him a 1990 FA Cup final place. Ironically, his replacement was Lee Martin, who scored the winner. An inspired run on the far side. A chance here and a goal! Lee was fully fit and recovered for the 1991 season. His season, starting with the unforgettable League Cup tie at Highbury. To think I could score a hat-trick past Dave Seaman and we beat Arsenal 6-2, what a night that was. Um, I couldn't believe when the first one went in. I thought, as soon as I scored a 20-yarder with my right foot, I thought, oh, I've got to try things here. It's my lucky night. Chance to cash in on Arsenal's early indiscipline with Clayton Blackmore. It's there! 80 seconds! Clayton Blackmore gives Manchester United a dream start. Clayton Blackmore. Lee Sharp kills for offside as Bruce retires belatedly. Here's Danny Wallace though. Chance for Hughes. 2 0. Stoppage time now in this first half. What a half it's been for United. Winterburn doing just enough. Sharp pinching it back from Dixon. It's a beauty! It's raining goals at Highbury! Lee Sharp with an absolute curl. from Young Lee Sharp by McClare Denny Sirwin Hughes throws the foul tackle set up Irwin again great cross Sharp great goal just what United needed Hughes to Wallace still United going forward in search of more Lee Sharp Patrick hunting I just won't believe this night is happening to him. A boy has become a man tonight. Lee Sharp has grown up with a most dramatic hat-trick. Brian McClare urging men forward still. And he's got plenty of choices. Mark Hughes with McClare, Wallace and Ince waiting. Oh, Danny Wallace! Six! It was a night when Lee graduated from being a promising youngster to a first-team regular. The making of a man, a superstar, with the image and charisma to match. The Gemini male is quite vain. Can want to be a little bit outrageous at times. They're the ones that want the very bright, as it is in younger, in the younger male anyway. You know, they like a, like to shock, maybe um, a bit more flamboyant. Could you please demonstrate the famous Sharpie Shuffle for us? <laughs> uh, actually, actually, the manager's banned me from doing it and he's got his spine. Oh. Do we believe that? No! Would you like to see it? Yeah! Will you tell Alec Ferguson? I've been temping bowling a couple of times and uh, I'd got a couple of sort of strikes and I've turned around and give it the old knees and hands and all sorts. And uh, just after, the, after I'd scored the hat-trick at Ibrahim on the Wednesday.